Just open up doors for jet, make the best of time that you got left. Hot and out of fishing under the sun. But even if it rains, it's gonna have some fun. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go, get outdoors with Jeff. When visiting the Rathmoy Pheasant Preserve on the Rangitiki River near Fielding, we saw some of the best gun dogs in the country at work. It was the annual North Island Spaniel Field Trial Championships, and it's a real pleasure seeing such well-trained dogs doing the business. The object is to pick up the scent of a bird and put it up for the gun well within shooting range. Many things can go wrong when you're dealing with wily birds like pheasants, and it takes a top performance to win. The dogs and handlers work as a team together, and the close bond between a person and the dog is clear to see. When it comes to bird shooting, particularly hunting pheasants, there's a lot of tradition involved, uh, going back to European days. And today we're going on a pheasant hunt from the central part of the North Island. I've got a side-by-side, -side, which is a very traditional sort of a gun, and I've got two gentlemen here with me who are actually dressed up for the occasion. Um, good day for it, uh, Scott. Oh, beautiful weather for it, Jeff. Yep. Absolutely. And I see you've, uh, you, you boys have got, got, uh, got the, the correct attire on. Oh, well, why not take advantage of the opportunity to get out here with some nice guns and some nice company? Absolutely. Some fine English tweed too, Jeff. English tweed and Italian guns. So we've got the, the new Fausti guns, which are uh, new in New Zealand, and we're going to put these to the test. So, uh, good combination. Absolutely. Cheers. Can't wait to get into it, actually. Now it's our turn to pick up the gun. Yeah, I can like this. like this. We're not shooting driven birds today, but it's what we call walk-up shooting. We follow the dogs, and you have to be ready for a bird to flush at any moment. Oh, well, first shot with the side-by-side. Uh, -side. It's been 40 years since I used a gun like this. And, oh, beautiful, sweet, and we got it. First rooster, fantastic. Here he comes. All right, oh, beautiful, boys, beautiful. Well, there it is. Beautiful Rathmoy cock pheasant. What a place. And it's great seeing the dogs working, you know. And uh, as Ross, the, uh, the owns the dogs, uh, he's a, these are field trial champion dogs. We saw them working yesterday uh, at the championships. And uh, it's a bit cold and the pheasants are running, so uh, the dogs quite often don't get a chance to, to hold and point. So when the dog gets onto it, you've got to be ready. But hey, what a beautiful bird. The morning shoot was pretty quiet, but the exercise was welcome, and now our host, Mark Grace, has a real surprise in store for lunch. What a beautiful spot. This is the Tipara hut, and uh, belongs to Mark's uh, good friend, Andrew. People come down here and stay, it sleeps about 12 people, we've got the river out here and uh, good trout fishing in the summer, I would imagine. Uh, lovely spot. So we've just popped in to uh, light the fire, have a cup of tea and a uh, little fresh cake and, uh, and then we'll get on with some more pheasant shooting. But they do things in style at Rathmoy. Part of the Rathmoy pheasant shooting experience, uh, Mark, just pop into the bush. Here we've got a fire going, a cup of tea, fresh cake. <coughs> All right, fresh scones. <laughs> Look after the troops, more oh, beautiful. Yep, no, we, we get the coffee boiling in a second and uh, then we'll get back into it. You yeah. betcha. I like the tie, Kent. That's your pheasant shooting tie. It is uh, my pheasant shooting tie. It was given to me in England uh, by a dear friend of mine, Trevor. 
yep. uh, who said we've got to have the right tie to go pheasant shooting with. And it certainly helps the aim. I mean, yeah, you can you can identify your bird first before you shoot it. You know. Oh, I could see that. Well, you pulled off some good shots today. No, thank good you. Good birds, weren't they? Thank you. There were some good birds here, yeah, and yeah. it's always nice to see them coming out over the treetops and uh, yeah. having a crack on them and, th and think, well, I got that one. You know, there's <laughs> yeah. a few I missed too. So you know, yeah, it, it's, it's not all easy uh, going, it's no, easy it's pickings. Always, yeah. Yeah, they've got a good setup here, haven't they? A oh, great setup. Yeah, yeah. it's so natural. Yeah. And look at all the totals around and that, and the, the way it's done, and the fire, and it's beautiful. It really is. And the, and the meeting of the two rivers here, yeah. just superb. Coming up, we have a miss, and we have a hit. Come on, let's go. Get outdoors. I'm with Jeff. We're now going to hunt along the riverbank and the lupins are always prime cover for the birds. It's been raining most of the morning and pheasants actually don't like getting wet so they don't move around, which makes it hard for the dogs to pick up a scent. We did see a pheasant take off and fly a short distance, landing under the riverbank. It's always exciting when you know there's a bird there, but you don't know where it's going to get up. The important thing is to always be aware of where the other shooters are, which is why we walk in a line, and where the dog handlers are. There it is. There, right. The dog is there. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> hey, missed it, missed it. You know, missed the old one, Jeffrey. Yeah, bird went in here and uh, dog put it up, and shot down through the river. Oh, oh, very exciting. Okay, be another one. Well, that was a hard run for a run. <laughs> Cold and wet. Yeah. Well, at least the river wasn't three foot high. Be down the down the bloody bulls by now. <laughs> oh, well done. Here we go. Yep. Look at that. Another one for the book. Another one. Here it looks like Charmolia for the cattle and pheasants always love that sort of cover. It's a little bit wet from the rain which has just stopped so that might put them off a bit but the dogs are going to go through the crop. We'll spread out along the edge here and see if something comes out. Well, pretty exciting when you know the bird's there and, the, and it's really, you don't get any better shots than that, Jeffrey. Easier. Still, makes up for the hard ones that we miss. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mark. That was well done, mate. You always look after your customers like that. Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. So, Mark, this is really something. I've done it all around the country, and this has got to be one of the uh, best operations I've seen. I've never seen so many birds as there were yesterday around the, around the lodge. Wouldn't let me shoot at the lodge. We, we had to come and walk through the bush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're nice to see them, aren't they? Yeah, yeah no, we can't give you the, the two easy ones, Jeff. Yeah, exactly. So how, how long have you been, uh, been doing this? Yeah, um, eight season. Yeah. Eight season. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, what? What? Why did you get into? I mean, it's not easy producing pheasants for guns. And... No, um, got into it uh, as a passion. I think. Um, yeah, no, I used to rear pheasants and partridges as a, as a young fella, and um, um, I mean, came home from overseas, and, and um, think. Uh, the uh, the idea of being stuck on the farm dagging sheep forever um, uh, didn't appeal completely, and just a, a little bit of something else yeah. added in there. No, no. If I had a farm, I reckon I'd be into it too. But it's it's not easy. It's like any business, you know. It's uh, it's it involves a lot of money. Yeah, a friend of mine uh, offered me um, 120 hen pheasants, and, and after I'd been on my first driven sheep in 2006, and um, thought, right, oh. Well, that was, that was a bit of fun. <laughs> and um, away we went from there. We sure, so. the yeah. You breed your own birds now? Yep. 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 What, you have the hatchery and incubators? Or... Yeah, so we, we catch all the birds up at the end of the season. And um, as laying stock, put them under a wire and um, then keep the eggs every day, put them into the incubator. Well, my gamekeeper does. Who, yeah. Pete Gifford has come out from England special. He's been doing it for about 30 years over there. Okay. And um, so he's... Yeah, but, but he's fine tuned. And how many birds do you do a year? We do a thousand for home, for yep. and, and um, and, and about five hundred or a thousand for up here. When you get a bunch of people, you know, we did a walk up because we don't have a lot of guns. But uh, when you drive them, you do the classic, classic, traditional shooting with the beaters, putting the birds over the gun. Yep. Boy, that's exciting. Isn't it? Yep. Right. You know, it certainly gets the blood up. Yeah. You? Yeah. And you Absolutely. Can, you put the cigarette yeah. out while you're waiting on the pig, and uh, the horn goes and. Yeah. They start coming and there's a, the, uh, there's a tradition at Rathmore that she's a nude run down the gun line if you run out of ammo. If you run out of ammo, you do a nude run down the gun line. That's a scary thought. Some of the people I've seen shooting. But, uh, I'm definitely not going to run out of ammo. And what are, what are the rules? Because, you know, uh, preserves now are big business in New Zealand. Quite a few of them have to be licensed, don't you? Yep. 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 So all, all got to... Um, um, there's a certain code of conduct that everyone's got to abide by and, and um, between the Department of Conservation and Fish and Game they've all got to be licensed and um, yeah. it's a normally five year licence that's right. given out so, the reserves. But, but because of the situation, because of the birds are raised and then you sort of are creating the shooting, you don't have to stick to the regular limits and you're allowed to shoot hens of course, you know, which we've been shooting a few females, because uh, it wouldn't work if you, if you couldn't, would it? No. Uh, it just wouldn't be able to get out of balance. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And you've got to have good dogs, haven't you? Good dogs and good handlers. Yeah. You've got a good crew, obviously, to come. Yeah, it's the key to the puzzle. Without them, it's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the old faithful friends, they do a fantastic job just yeah. just working away. And good to see Ross with his pointers here today. Yeah. 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 Um, but, but normally, um, the Spaniels and the Labradors. So, not just about the pheasant shooting, there's uh, a lot of things you can do at Rathport. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it certainly evolved into um, um, more adventure activities and, and um, uh, having the lodge there next to the river is a, just a prime location and so a couple of years ago we put the cricket pitch in in front of it and um, um, it's good for a bit of social cricket. We're busy during the winter which is opposite to a lot of uh, sort of lodgy accommodation type um, places where you get, get getting out of the city. Um, and so, yeah, starting to get quite a few teams coming in for sort of champagne breakfast, jet boat to golf, play the, play the bottom six up the cable car, top six into the clubhouse for lunch, and then yeah. but that's on the Rangatira golf course. It was okay. Just up the road and yeah, we saw we passed that. So you've got golf, a bit of cricket, and some play target shooting, no doubt. You've got a, you know, yeah, no, we off the cliff there, some high targets. A little bit of that. Champagne breakfast and uh, have a lot of fun. Probably even a bit of trout fishing in the summer, I would imagine. Well, it's great. We had, a, I had an Australian uh, 
here the um, uh, last year who uh, the, the, did a bit of a walk up shoot up here and then next morning he shot down and um, with a spinning rod of course um, he got uh, what did he get six with eight casts really? and then we went out and shot about 200 pheasants and he was, he was very happy camper. He, he came back six weeks later with the whole team from Australia. <laughs> I don't understand why. A bunch of trout shooting, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll have to come back in the summer and see if we can. can't catch a trout. I haven't caught one the ring ticky for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you need to uh, have, a, have a bit of a crack down there and then maybe venture up to the old hole. Exactly. <laughs> right up the top. Right up the top. Yep. And uh, to contact you, you just go to the website. www.rathmoy.co.nz. Yep. Simple as that. Uh, so there you go. You yeah. shoot some pheasants. That's the place to go. Yeah, no, you're right. Coming up, we cook the game. Look at those beautiful babies! Woo! That's that phyllo pastry I've put the butter on. Yeah, We've got the duck in the lot. Let's go! Let's go! Get outdoors! Oh, with Jeff! We were over there and about three or four went over where we were, so we come down here. That pheasant. There's one I saw one on the ground in there, a roost. I don't know where he's gone, but the dogs are coming up here. We're right at the end of the V on the trees. Theoretically, it's a good place. The pheasants all came out when the sun came out, but we've got enough birds for everybody to take a couple home. And now we're going to see how an expert cooks the birds, and this time it's wild duck on the menu. Sorry, That's Over there, getting excited about the shooting tomorrow. But Scott and I are doing the business, and I tell you what, it looks like we're going camping here, mate. We've got the, we've got the camp cooker. Yeah, we have indeed. <laughs> yep, camp cooker. Um, I'm from Palmerston North, and, and I'm not sure of the cooking arrangements here. So just bring this as a bit of a bit of a safety thing, and it's gas. It's very controllable. We cook in a commercial kitchen. We like to cook with gas. Yes, so anyway, on with it. Yep. We've got a bit of um, got a hot pan. Put a little bit of oil into it. It's our fennel, it's our cumin, it's our coriander. We okay, just... don't want to burn them, so I'm going to get some onions in there. Yep. Okay, I'm going to saute those off quickly. The carrot in there, sweep that off so that it um, goes sort of translucent. We want to add a little bit of sweetness as well. We've got a little bit of port wine jelly there. We've got some chopped up prunes. We've got some apples with the skin on and some pear with the skin on. It's, it is game, it's a bit rustic and that sort of really all adds to the flavour. Okay, so we're going to fire into there our pear, apple, prunes, port wine jelly. and we stir that round, just let them sort of sweat off a little bit. The boys are going to enjoy the game dinners at Jeffrey's place afterwards. So we just need that to, to, to cook away now, simmer, probably probably 10 minutes or so, just so that the, the apples are cooked and all the, all the vegetables are cooked and the flavours are, are really mingling really, really well. All right, we've reduced that a bit, cooked it up for about 10 minutes. And the duck goes in. Duck goes in, and now we just stir it around and let the duck act like a sponge and soak up all that extra moisture in there. And then we'll um, put it onto a tray, into a bag, into the bowl, put it into the fridge, cool it down, wrap it in filo pastry, bake it in the oven for 15 minutes, and there you have it. All right, our duck uh, spicy mixture is nice and cool. It's cool, so we're just going to wrap it in filo pastry. Pretty simple. Two, two sheets of phyllo, amount of filling, about 100 grams of, of, or so of, of filling, which is using my eye trometer, I can tell you that's about, about 100 about grams. Right. Okay, in the centre, because it's a very rich meat, you don't need too much of it. Once again, that's how you put the butter on. Fold it tight, but not too tight, because if it's too tight, it'll burst. And last of all, just put a little brush across the top there. A little extra bit of love, a little bit of pepper, sesame seeds, poppy seeds, whatever you like. Something like that, and then in the oven. And uh, in the oven, 
15 minutes or so, so it's nice and golden brown, yep. and there you have it. Look at those. Yeah, babies. Ooh. That's that filo pastry I put the butter on. You did, We've got yes. the duck and the Moroccan spices in there. Yep, yep, get on now. Is it alright, people? Yeah. Enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Outdoors. Oh, with Jeff. Well, our tip this week, we're going to talk about the guns we've been using today and uh, very successfully most of the time. Uh, I love this side, boys. I love this, uh, Brian. It's a lovely gun. I isn't love it? using that gun. It is, isn't it? No, it's like going back in time for me. And uh, tell me about it. Well, that's a, a Fausti style. Um, it comes in a couple of variations. One thing about Fausti, they're very good at making um, sub gauges. That's where they've made a lot of their business out of. So we can get this in a 12 gauge, 20 gauge, right the way down to 410. Sure. Some of the extra models have gold inlay, yeah. just to bling it up a wee bit, but it's a beautiful gun to use. And for snap shooting like this today, it's fantastic. Oh, it's done very well. And what are, what are we using, Scott? Uh, today, Jeff, I was using the uh, Class SL. So um, Brian's using the Class. Um, the SL version has the side plate on it, yeah. so they can do a little bit more engraving and that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you like you shot well with yours, bro. No, oh, I love it. The, yeah. They just for field guns, they're really great. I mean, as you said, with the side by side or the over and under, they shoot exactly the same. Yeah. So if you're used to one, you can be used to the other. It will come up nicely for you. So my problem is going to be which one to use now. <laughs> <laughs> Our sponsors help us catch the fish and hunt the game. For all your hot water needs, go to ream.co.nz or see your local plumbing merchant. Next week, we visit the lovely island of Nui for a fishing contest with a difference. Under the sun, but even if the wind's on our hands, I'm fine. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go, get outdoors with Jeff.